Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth and I shall see God whom I shall see for myself and my eyes shall behold and not another we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner, as all my fathers were. O spare me that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. There are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our God. Thank you that you are our Father. Thank you that you are the one who numbers our days. Thank you because our lives are in your hands. And even as we stand before you today, in the midst of a season of mourning, we are praying that you would grant comfort and strength on this day. I pray that our moments together will be moments that we will remember that will challenge us about our own journey of life even as we celebrate the life of Elsie. So we pray that you will speak to us as we sing and you will speak to us through your spoken word today. We commit ourselves to you even as we commit this time to you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. And so today I want to welcome you to the service of thanksgiving for the life of Elsie Lolita. Those of you who are here in the sanctuary and those of you who are joining us online, thank you for your support for this family today. And my prayer is that our moments together will be moments that will be well spent and that we will treasure and remember for a long time we are going to sing today 
hymns of our faith. Elsie, a woman of faith. And so we're going to begin with the hymn, We Are Marching to Zion. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord and thus surround the throne. We are marching to Zion, that beautiful city of God. speaks to us at every season of life and today we want to look to the 90th division of the book of Psalm from verse 1 to 12. Brother Christopher Stout will come and read that scripture for us. Psalm 90 verses 1 to 12, I'll be reading from the New International Version. And it reads as follows. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you were 
brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O son of man, for a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just been gone, or like a watch in the night. You sleep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. Though in the morning it spring up new, by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set your iniquity before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All the days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a mourn. The length of the days is 70 years or 80. If we have the strength, yet their span is but trouble and sorrow. For the quickly pass away and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is a great to fear that is due. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Here ends the reading. The hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I say. All I have needed, thy hand have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me.
Indeed, God's faithfulness toward us is great, and we can sing of the faithfulness of our God. We invite Sister Cheryl Rivera at this time to come and to do a tribute on behalf of the women of the Church of God. And following that tribute, we will stand again and sing that great hymn of the faith, Blessed Assurance. Good morning, everyone. As the current president of the Gardens Women's Ministry, I am very happy and honored to share these tributes this morning for our sister Elsie on behalf of the entire church. Sister Elsie Lolita Grant, née Drakes, personified the woman who is highlighted in Proverbs chapter 31. I personally remember Sister Elsie as a woman who had a quest for seeing persons come to the knowledge of God and to serve him wholeheartedly. She promoted living for God by being God's servant with a heart of gold and passion that shone out in her daily life. She was my Sunday school teacher many moons ago and I remembered her as a happy person. These combination of tributes from the women of the Gardens Church of God are but a small snapshot of the woman that Sister Elsie was. She was a wonderful woman of God who gave such loving and devoted service in everything she did, whether it was teaching young children or adults about God's love for them, or in her chosen profession of nursing, from babies to the elderly, she exemplified the goodness of God in all that she did. We all know how lovingly she cared for her beloved husband, Eswit, and her daughter, Denise. She truly looked after her household. I'm sharing now from Sister Eudora Yearwood, who was the previous president. And she says that although the onset of COVID-19 curtailed our activities, she can say that Sister Elsie was very supportive of our women's ministry and would assist whenever she was asked to perform any tasks assigned, whether it was to lead, <clears throat> sorry, whether it was to lead in prayer or conduct any of the monthly Wednesday night meetings. Sister Pearl Goodridge, who was one of the earlier presidents, she shared that before immigrating to the United Kingdom, Sister Elsie Grant served as Vice President of the Gardens Women's Ministry. It was called the WCG in those days. For many years, as well as a teacher in the Sunday School. Upon her return to Barbados, she shared her experiences of church life overseas, and included, those were included in her leadership. She also coordinated the weekly morning prayer meetings along with Sister Olive Short and Sister Eudora Yearwood. Sister Elsie was an active member of the health team and was very supportive to that committee and ministry. She was committed to her responsibilities and went over and above the call of duty. She was also a member of the senior citizens group. Her good friend, Sister Olive Short, shared she recounted that she met Sister Elsie in the year 1956 in the United Kingdom, where they were both taught nursing together in Buckinghamshire, general and midwifery. This friendship lasted for 65 years until Sister Elsie's passing this year. They went to Canada in 1975. Sister Elsie worked with babies and they returned to Barbados in 1995. Overseas in Canada, they both joined the Baptist Church. They were active. She was an active member there. She taught Sunday school, joined the prayer group, as well as the ladies' ministry. Pastor, retired Pastor G. Yvonne Babs shared, and she said Sister Elsie would marry to her cousin, Brother Eswick Grant. She reminisced that back in those days, when they were all young growing up, Sister Bab's mother 
would only let them, which is Yvonne and Wilma, go to the exhibition if Elsie and Violet were going. And they shared a very good family relationship with lots of fun. She said that Elsie was faithful to her family and she has only profound gratitude for her and thanks her for the very good care which she took of her uncle Eswe. And this is from the health desk, contributed by sisters Lydia Waterman and Olive Stewart. As was recounted before, Sister Elsie Grant emigrated in 1955 to England, where she studied nursing at Brockwood Hospital, along with Evel Olive Stewart, whom she met there. They both later moved on to Canada in 1975 and returned to Barbados in 1995 and worshiped here at the Gardens Church of God. They discussed our aging population and how best they could use their combined knowledge and skills to care for and support the elderly in the aging process. As a result of these discussions, the health ministry in the Gardens Church of God was established in the year 1999. Through regular health checks, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight, counseling on medications, and compliance with our pharmacies, Meetings were held every second Saturday at the church after prayer meeting at 7 a.m. This was extended to the wider community. The seniors care group and the bereavement support care were later added to this ministry. We thank God for Sister Elsie's yeoman service. Sister Olive Shore and Sister Lydia Waterman want to say to Sister Elsie, thank you for your constant support and kindness and we quote, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servant. And that's taken from Psalms 116, verse 15. Sister Elsie, may your legacy of love and care and commitment and dedication to a worthy cause live on in all of us. Rest in peace and rise in glory. Thank you. Let us stand, please. The hymn, Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fall. in his blood this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long 
We give God thanks for the blessed assurance that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ and we also give God thanks for the fact that this assurance belongs to Sister Elsie. Sometimes it seems in this pandemic and the dynamics of the pandemic that it's a bit unfair that persons who have made such a significant, such an enormous impact on the lives of so many individuals have such a simple ceremony to celebrate their life and legacy. We are assured, however, that while on this side the dynamics of our times may necessitate this kind of simplicity that they are great rewards for those who serve their Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. And so I want to extend to Sister Elsie's family, immediate and extended condolences on behalf of my family, on behalf of the church family, of the Garden community, and also on behalf of the Church of God family in Barbados and across the Caribbean Atlantic region as well. I want to draw your attention to a passage found in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and I want to read just a few verses, four verses from verse 24 to 27, and it reads, In a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. You know that, don't you? So run in a way that you will get the prize. All who take part in the games train hard. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. So I do not run like someone who doesn't run toward the finish line. I do not fight like a boxer who hits nothing but ear. No, I train my body and bring it under control. Then after I have preached to others, I myself will not break the rules. If I did break them, I would fail to win the prize. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you because your word is relevant to us in all seasons of life. And thank you that on a day like today, we can receive guidance and instruction from your word. 
Your word is already blessed and self declares that it will not return void, but will accomplish what it was sent to accomplish. We stand on that word today and believe that you will accomplish in our hearts today by faith all that your word is intended to accomplish. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <coughs> In life, we are often motivated by things which are opposite in nature, pain and pleasure, perks and threats, punishment that we deserve and rewards that we merit. And in this passage, it signifies that there is a prize. And God gave us life, determining that we should be the persons who would occupy time and space on this planet. He didn't need to create us, but in his omniscience, he did. And he created us not just as a body, but with a spirit that lives on even after this body dies. And the Bible indicates that there are rewards for those who follow Jesus. The Bible makes it clear that here, on this side, we have abundant life. He came that we might have life and have it abundantly. So when we follow Jesus, we have abundant life. But the Bible also makes it clear that not only do we have abundant life, but that we have eternal life and because we have eternal life there is a place in heaven for us with our Lord Jesus Jesus made this clear to his disciples when he said to them in my father's house are many mansions he said if this were not so would I not have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. When John was on the island of Patmos, he saw a vision of a new heaven and a new earth. And in Revelation 21, we read, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven sing, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and shall be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I may call things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these things are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And, and these passages highlight clearly rewards and punishments. And, and as Paul writes to the church at Corinth, he says to them, listen, there is a prize that is awaiting but I want to challenge you to run to win the prize. 
And I want to say to us today that if we are going to run to win the prize, the first thing that we need to do is that we have to participate in the race. You are not going to win a prize unless you are a participant in the race. And the race that we are talking about today is what we call the Christian race. You see, rewards, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, rewards are reserved for those persons who participate. So if we are going to participate in the race, it begins by having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing more and nothing less will get you involved in this race than having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we can do good works. We can have godly parents. We can even attend church regularly. But until we come to the place where we recognize that we are sinners and that we are in need of the saving grace of Jesus, and until we exercise faith in Christ alone for our sins and for, our, for the remission of our sins and for our salvation, we are not going to get involved in this race. Ephesians 2.9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If we're going to get involved in the race, it begins with a knowledge of Jesus Christ. John 3, 16, one of the most popular passages of scripture um, in the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, should not perish. Again, we are highlighting the extreme. Should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And, and Jesus speaking, um, as recorded by, by John the Apostle says, He that hath the Son has life. He that has not the Son has not life. So it means that first of all, if we are going to run to win this race, we have to become participants in the race and if we become participants in the race it means that we stand to make it to the end of this race Jesus in his teaching highlighted that there will be those who will stand before God expecting to receive rewards but because there were persons who did not participate in the race because there were individuals who lived their lives as they liked, who ignored the Son of God, living for themselves, neglecting the gift of salvation. They will hear the words, depart from me, for I don't even know you. If we're going to run to win this race, we have to, first of all, participate. I also want to suggest that if we are going to run to win the race, we need to prepare. We need to prepare for the race. In Hebrews 12, we read, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything, the weights that hinder and the sin that so easily besets or entangles us, and let us run with perseverance, the race that is marked out for us. If we're going to run the race to win, we need to prepare. And an integral aspect of preparation, and Paul, as he writes to the church at Corinth in our text, talks about the fact that we need to prepare if we're going to run the race. An integral part of preparation is knowing what to get rid of knowing what to drop off, knowing what to leave behind. Because if we're going to run this race well, there are some things that we can't take with us. There are some things that will hinder our progress and may even stop us from getting to the finish line and winning the race. Because you see, the Christian race is not a sprint. It is more like a marathon 
It involves every day of your life as long as you live. It takes you through hills and valleys. It gives you mountaintop experiences and lows in life. It takes you around bends when you don't know what is on the other side. It, it takes you to, through times of joy and times of sorrow, times of rejoicing and times of grief. It takes you through some tough moments and, and difficult times when you feel as though you would quit. But if we're going to make it, if we're going to win the race, then it means that we're going to have to drop off some things because they may stop us from getting to the finish. I want to say that envy will stop you from running this race well. So we got to lay it aside. You see, there, there are many people who go through life being jealous and bitter about what other people have. And when we do that, we rob ourselves of the prize. Envy will stop you from running the race well. So we got to leave it aside. Pride will stop us from running this race well. When we think too much of ourselves and think that we are better than others and we don't want to serve anyone, we don't want to help anyone because everything is surrounded, um, is centered rather around us. We are not going to run the race well if, we are, if our lives are filled with pride. I want to also suggest that prolonged anger will cause you to run a faulty race. You see, we live in an imperfect world and we are all imperfect people. And sooner or later, you are going to make someone angry or someone is going to make you angry. But anger, especially prolonged anger, it demands too much of your energy. It demands too much of your emotional energy. And it causes you, prolonged anger causes you to make bad decisions and choices in life. And so when anger is allowed to fester, it stops us from running the race well. Discontentment will stop you from running the race well. Can I say to you today that we ought to love ourselves, regardless of how, how we look. Whether you're fat or slim or tall or short, um, it doesn't matter what your complexion is, you are the workmanship of God in Christ, fearfully and wonderfully made. Love yourself and run the race well because God has designed you. I want to say that um, discontentment, yes, will stop you from running the race. Well, listen. You see, on, on this side, there are some things that may not work out perfectly for us. But there will come a time when the size of your house will not matter. There will come a time when the kind of car that you drive will not matter. Enjoy what you have rather than spending time wishing that you had something else. Can I just say one more thing that can stop us from running this race well? Unforgiveness can stop us from running this race well. We need to throw it off. Somebody will offend you and guess what? You're going to offend somebody as well. So in as much as somebody will need your forgiveness, the time will come when you will need someone's forgiveness as well. And there are many people who went to their graves holding people in their hearts, never being able to forgive them. And the Bible clearly states for us that this is a problem for believers because if we are unable to forgive others their trespasses, neither will our heavenly Father forgive us. These are things that we need to strip ourselves of if we are going to run this race well. 
But there's one more thing that's highlighted in this text that we read as Paul spoke about the games and, and the importance of running to win the prize. He suggests in this text that if we are going to run to win the prize, not only do we need to participate, not only do we need to prepare, but we need to persist. I want to say to us who are gathered here today and those who are watching us online, that there is an enemy of our souls who is bent on stopping us from getting the prize. Who does not want us to run in such a way that we will win the prize? Who does not want us to get this crown? He does not want us to reap the rewards that are for the righteous. And so what he does is that he puts stumbling blocks in our way. But I want to challenge you today to persist. When things get tough, persist because there is a prize that is awaiting you. I want to say to you that when things get tough, to hang in there and fight the good fight because there is a crown that's awaiting you. Listen, that's why it's called a fight. It's called a race, which means that it requires some persistence. And it's also called a fight, which means that you've got to hang in there if you're going to make it to the end and you are going to win. So Jesus said to his disciples, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. He didn't say when this happens, turn back, get out of the race. What he said, rejoice, be exceedingly glad, keep going, keep fighting, keep marching forward because there's a crown that awaits you. Romans 8.37 says, In all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him that loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Our Lord. So God is on our side. His love for us doesn't change when our circumstances change. He is fighting for us. He's urging us to keep on in the race. And, and, and the writer of Hebrews gives us this picture of those who have gone before us also nudging us and urging us and encouraging us to keep fighting, to keep running because there's a crown that is before us. And this passage that we read today in 1 Corinthians 9 was written from the background of the Ithmian games. These games were held every two years. They were like what we consider today the Olympic Games. And they were held outside of Corinth. And people came from everywhere in the Mediterranean to watch. On display would be the best talent. There would be foot races and wrestling and boxing and gymnastics, field events and several other activities. These things are not new. But when you won, you were exempted from paying taxes for the rest of your life. You were exempted from serving in the military. In fact, for the winners, statues of them were erected. But what persons considered the real prize was a celery reef that would be placed around the necks of them that won the races. A crown made of grass. So Paul says here, they do it to get a crown that will not last. A celery reef put around their necks. And they put their all into those games to get that celery reef around their necks. They trained, they prepared, they persisted. Because they wanted to get that celery reef around their necks. 
because it was a signal of, a symbol rather, of a champion. Paul said they did it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. I want to say to us today, it's worth it to persist in this Christian race. It's worth it to fight the good fight of faith. Life may not be perfect, but there is coming a time when there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And there are going to be rewards for those that live true and live faithful to our God. So don't give up, my friend. For one day, we will stand on the winner's podium. The national anthem of heaven will begin to play. And the voice will ask, who are these? And from whence have they come? And the answer will be, these are those who have passed through great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb the father will say come ye blessed inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth they do it to get a crown that will not last but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Amen. Let's all stand together today. Let us pray. Father, thank you today. That in the midst of the trials and the challenges that we face in this life, your word presents to us the promise of the life to come. Thank you that we can have all the benefits of being your children now. But that even beyond this life, there are rewards for those who live true and faithful to you. Thank you, God, that today we can stand celebrating a sister who has run a good race, celebrating a sister who has fought a good fight, Celebrating a sister who has run to win the prize. And so even though we mourn, we, we don't mourn as people who are without a hope. Because your word assures us that for those who participate and prepare and persist in this race, there is a crown that awaits, a crown that lasts forever father today in the midst of our moments of grief i pray that you will uphold us with your hand you will undergird us with your strength you will cover us with your protection you will hold us like a hand hovers around her cheeks i pray that you will give strength and courage and hope and encouragement to this family. Reminding them that you are on their side. You are with them. And that they will not fail because of your strong arm surrounding them. We bless you today and give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And we want to, today, for our recessional, we want to just do two verses of blessed assurance. We sang it before. Jesus is mine. This is the assurance that we are talking about. When we belong to Jesus, 
when he belongs to us, we have that assurance and we can run to win the prize. Amen.
for as much as it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world and unto himself the soul of our deceased brother or deceased sister we therefore commit her body to the ground earth to earth ashes to ashes dust to dust I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me write blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth saith the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them the Lord is my shepherd I shall he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I shall fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and today we celebrate the life of an outstanding sister and servant of God Almighty I'll see Lolita Grant we are going to sing shall we gather at the river where bright angel feet have trod where this crystal tide forever flowing from the throne of God yes we'll gather at the river the beautiful the beautiful river gather with the Saints at the river that flows from the throne of God highlighting the great hope of the believer
let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Our second hymn, When We All Get to Heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul.
Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Our final hymn in the sweet by and by. Now the peace of God that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Lady Shalom.